Bienvenue à Nancy Coucou les amis, c'est Camden, je suis à Nancy, à la place Stanislas. C'est très célèbre ici et il y a le sapin de Noël. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you around with me to Nancy, France, which is about two hours outside of Paris. It's in the eastern region of France, Le Grand Est, uh, in the department of Meurthe et Moselle. And it's historically known for being the capital of the Lorraine region. So you might have heard of Quiche Lorraine, Quiche Lorraine, uh, and that comes from this part of France. And there's lots of history here. It's a really beautiful little city. So there's a beautiful 18th century square, which is Place Stanislas, named after Stanislas I of Poland, who was the King of Poland, but also the Duke of Lorraine at that time. Uh, later on, the region was annexed by Louis XV and it became a province of France. And if you're new here, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Camden. I'm an American English teacher who lives in Paris, France, but I've been living all over France for the past few years not just Paris, and I like to make videos about my experiences here as a foreigner in France and love to share travel videos as well. So if those things kind of interest you, why don't you check out some of my other videos or maybe even go to my Instagram where I post more photography and day in the life type things. This was a typical November day in the east of France, pretty chilly and gray. I know, I used to live in a little town called Montbéliard and the weather was like this a lot of the time. So after getting a coffee and a hot chocolate, my boyfriend decided to show me around some of the main sites of the city. And he was showing me around because he recently moved here from Toulouse, which is a big change. After admiring the gilded gates at Place Seine, we made our way to La Grande Rue, the big road which is in the medieval part of the city. This part of town is super picturesque and we passed by lots of restaurants, bakeries, little boutiques and made our way to La Porte de la Craf. Uh, alors, cette porte, c'était pour... Uh, ça, ça a servi de prison et aussi de fortification uh, militaire. Mm -hmm. Ça a eu ces deux fonctions-là. As I mentioned earlier, quiche Lorraine is the most famous dish that comes from this region, but there's also pâté Lorrain, lots of tarts and baked goods with onions and pork and lots and lots of butter. So it's a very heavy cuisine in this region. I mean, this is just some of the food, of course, but it makes sense because it's so cold. For a little afternoon sweet treat, we bought some macarons des sœurs. These are traditional style macarons, and they don't look like the pretty pink ones from La Durée you can find in Paris, but they are just as delicious. When you buy them, they'll be wrapped up in some paper like this, and you're actually supposed to let them sit out in the air for a little bit of time so they can get less hard but they were still pretty good right out of the box. And they reminded me of the macaron that we had in Saint-Emilion, which is near Bordeaux. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, 
Luckily for us, the second day of our weekend was nice and sunny, so we went on a long walk to check out some Art Nouveau architecture in the city, which is what Nancy is known for. It's actually what made Nancy known as the capital of the east of France because it competed with Paris in the level of Art Nouveau that they had. So this style of art includes architecture, but also interior design that was categorized by dynamic lines and curves, lots of imagery inspired by the shapes of plants, their vines and leaves, and some of the common materials included wood, iron, and glass. Art Nouveau was popular in Nancy at the turn of the 20th century, when a group of artisans formed what is known as l'école de Nancy. This neighborhood is called Sorup, and the reason why there are so many Art Nouveau homes in this area is because of the École de Nancy. This Parc de Sorup was a big project of theirs. And if you happen to be taking a stroll in this Art Nouveau neighborhood, I would highly recommend visiting the Bac Sainte Marie. It is a wonderful little haven full of beautiful, beautiful trees. It was especially lovely in the autumn because the foliage was changing colors. Across from the park is the Nancy School Museum. So this used to be the residence of collector Eugène Corbin, and that is why there are so many beautiful things inside this little museum. So outside there's a lovely garden, and inside you can find rooms with lots of Art Nouveau furniture, glassware, etc. For nine euros each, we were able to purchase paired tickets for the Museum of the School of Nancy and for another Art Nouveau style villa. You don't have to have a specific time reserved for the museum, however, for the villa you have to have a specific time. So just be aware when planning your trip if you want to visit both of them. After visiting the museum, we had about an hour or two until our reserved visit at the villa. So we decided to walk around and we saw some more Art Nouveau buildings and we went back to Place Stanislas during golden hour because it was so much prettier than it was the day before, even though it still has its charm in the gray. The other Art Nouveau building that we visited is La Villa Majorelle, which is named after interior designer and furniture maker Louis Majorelle. He hired two architects, Henri Sauvage and Lucien Weissenberger, to build this house. Yes, they made us wear these funny little shoe covers so we could protect the wood from our feet. Majorelle even made some of the designs himself on the interior, such as the woodwork, and he also hired Jacques Gruber to make some of the stained glass in the building. And I just thought it was really interesting and cool how all of these artists collaborated to make these really unique houses. If you've made it all the way this far in the video, thank you. Please comment a little pie emoji because that's the closest thing there is to a quiche uh, to let me know that you've been watching. And I wanted to include some extra special footage at the end of this video. 
because a few weeks later I went back to Nancy for La Fête de Saint Nicolas which is the festival of Saint Nicholas and it's a really special time that they celebrate the first weekend of December usually it's December 6th but they celebrate on the weekend and it's even bigger than Christmas time over there the Christmas markets are even called the Saint Nicholas markets so hope you enjoy thanks again I'm in Nancy and I'm gonna go check out the Christmas markets here. It'll be my first Christmas market of the season, so let's see. La Fête de la San Nicolas is a Christian holiday that's observed in several parts of Europe. Now we are at the big market, the central market, the now. In France, it's mainly observed in the eastern part of the country. The markets here had classic winter food like raclette from the Alps and Alsatian bretzel, pretzels, but also some regional specialties like hot Mirabel plum juice. You can also find decorations, chocolates, and gingerbread all shaped like the saint. We visited several of the markets in town and even rode the Ferris wheel to see Place Seine from above. Although this is a cheerful holiday, the legend is quite gruesome. It tells of three children who get lost after working in a field all day. They ask to stay at the local butcher's house who then, well, butchers them and puts them in a salt barrel. Seven years later, San Nicola comes and brings the children back to life. Thus, he is known as the patron saint of children and brings them gifts and sweets. You know, kind of like Santa Claus. The butcher then becomes the figure Père Fruita, or Father Whipper, who's sentenced to follow San Nicola around and will punish naughty children with lumps of coal or beatings. I saw San Nicola and a young girl walking in the streets handing out fruit. Thankfully, I did not see Père Fruita. In the evening, the holiday is celebrated with a big parade, and there were tons and tons of people. It was kind of cold, so I would recommend dressing warmly if you want to see the parade next year and getting there early if you want a good spot. 